Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei awaken his sacred gear earlier and becomes the greatest security of all time part 4 season 1. Before we start please go support Demodeling for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Chapter 40 Holy Demonic Light vs Chaotic Despair. The date unites of Rhea's Gremory. It is wonderful to finally meet you both. My name is Siegfried also known as the Chaos Edge Sieg. I belong to the hero faction within the Cow's Brigade. The white-haired swordsman said as he took about a Zenovia and Kiba. Don't let your guard down Zenovia, this guy is dangerous I can sense something familiar about him. Kiba said as he materialized his holy demonic sword. Ah uh, yeah about that, sorry Zenovia Chan Siegfried said as disappeared with the blink of an eye and closed in on Zenovia. What? Zenovia said as she saw him reappear in her close range. But I'm only interested in fighting the knight who managed to create such a remarkable blade. Siegfried stated as he sent Zenovia away with the back of his blade. Zenovia damn you, Kiba said as he watched his fellow knight be cast aside. Ah don't worry about her, I have prepared her some friends to keep her company whilst we clash. The silver-haired swordsman said as several intimidating characters emerged from several magic circles and began to approach Zenovia. Zenovia Kiba said as he prepared to assist her. Don't worry about me Kiba you have to take down that guy so we can go save this air member. Zenovia said making Kiba stop in his tracks. But. Kiba said being quickly interrupted again. Don't worry about me it's time to show you the fruits of my training. Zenovia said as she summoned forth Durandal from its seal. Kiba smirked and returned his attention to the lookalike swordsman who patiently waited for Kiba to take his stance to battle him. Sorry to keep you waiting. As you requested, I will show you my true power as a knight of Rhea's Gremory. Kiba said as he awaited his opponent's next move. Yes that's it that's the look oh this is going to be fun, Siegfried said as he took his own stance. The two swordsmen silently gazed at one another as they assessed each other for strengths and weaknesses in their stance. Here I come, Kiba said as he used his perk of speed right off the bat. Oh you're fast. But not fast enough. Siegfried said as he sidestepped and avoided Kiba's thrust strike. Kiba grinned as he materialized another sword into his other hand and struck his opponent who previously dodged in an arrogant fashion. Oh not bad. Siegfried said as he parried Kiba's sneak attack with his own sword. Yes that's the sword I have been interested in. The sword once created defied the impossible. A sword with both holy and demonic attributes. It is certainly a fine blade. If you're so interested in the blades I possess, then how about these Kiba said as he created a magic circle underneath Siegfried, causing him to leap above the trap Kiba placed. So this is your sacred gear I have heard so much about. Siegfried said as he finally noticed the Kiba was no longer in sight. Burn to ashes and be frozen solid, Kiba yelled as he fell from above slashing with a sword infused with flames and the other encased in ice. Oh so you like to dual wield. Then I will too Siegfried said as he equipped a second blade to block Kiba's dual strike. The two swordsmen clashed within the air with vigorous force and suddenly broke apart and slowly fell towards the ground. Kiba and Siegfried displayed no fear as they quickly approached the ground from which below them lied the danger of both being skewered by the hundreds of swords Kiba previously planted. No this was not the case at all. Kiba and Siegfried with a calm expression, dropped safely onto the blades and stood on top of the swords, as if they were standing on a fence, rather than a pitiful death trap. Not bad Kiba Udo, but even after all that talk, I still believe you are holding back on me. Siegfried said as he twirled his two blades in hand. I could say the same thing about you Chaos Edge. You're definitely not taking me seriously. Kiba said as he made his swords below them disappear and made them both touch solid ground again. Well maybe I don't see the need to fight yet. Siegfried said making Kiba grin. Well then allow me to make things more exciting for you, Kiba said as he disappeared once again. This again? I told you already you're too slow, Siegfried said as he cut through the air. What? Siegfried blankly said as Kiba was in fact not within his striking range. All of a sudden, shards of the white swordsman's weapons fell to the ground when the golden-haired knight slashed through both of them with his dual-wielding holy demonic blades. What now cow's brigade? Are you going to fight me seriously? Or do you need me to go a little faster? Kiba said as he successfully kicked the Chaos Blade in the gut and forced him back a few meters. Yes that's more like a Kiba Yudo Siegfried said as he discarded the broken handles of his ruined blades. What now? Do you plan to fight me without a weapon now? Kiba said as he prepared to dash at him again. Oh no far from it I just feel that a normal sword won't work in this fight at all. So as a treat for you Knight of Rhea's Gremory I will cut you down with the strongest demon sword ever created, Siegfried said, as a dark and powerful destructive aura erupted throughout the area, as the Sword of Legend ascended from the ground onto the battlefield. And a red mini knucklidister sword of gear appeared on Siegfried's arm. Is that Graham? And wait. Is that a twice critical? Kiba said as he gripped his swords tighter. Correct this is Graham also known as the Sword of the Sun or the Demonic Emperor Sword if you prefer. 
It is the most powerful demon sword Siegfried said as he began to charge the stationary Kiba. Kiba underestimated the speed Siegfried would be able to travel at because of the anticipated weight of the sword he carried. And thus, he was only given the option to guard against him when he closed in on him at monster speed. In an instant, Siegfried sliced through Kiba's formidable and powerful holy demonic swords, effortlessly like a knife through butter. What? Kiba said as he barely managed to dodge in time to avoid injury. Surprised, huh? You're right, my sacred gear is very similar to the Securites, it is also a dragon type sacred gear. However, it still doesn't hold a candle to the boosted gear. But it's enough to give me the power to wield Gram. Kiba shook his head, snapping out of his state of confusion, and quickly summoned another blade to fight against the tenacious swordsman. It's useless, Siegfried yelled as he once again cut his sword into pieces. Crap, this isn't good, Kiba said as Siegfried was about to cut him down. Kiba voice shouted as they launched a projectile his way. Kiba's eyes shot wide open and caught the item just in time to defend himself. Oh? So you're going to try use the holy sword Durandal now are you? Interesting how a devil would wield a holy sword. But Siegfried said as he continued his attack. What? No way Kiba said as he felt his sword get heavier when Graham was slashed down onto his guard. It is still no match for Graham's superior sharpness, Siegfried said as he placed more pressure on Kiba's defense. Suddenly, Siegfried's advance was pushed back by Kiba's temporary surpass in strength. It looks like I have no choice then, Kiba said as he began to concentrate his demonic power. What did you just say? Siegfried said as the atmosphere suddenly became overwhelmed with demonic power. I really didn't want to use too much power so I could conserve it in order to help Issei Kun up ahead. But it looks like I have no choice balance break. All of a sudden, a shroud of purple mist descended upon the battlefield as Kiba with a will power and his determination, created an army of sword-wielding troops with dragon armor equipped. Oh this is different. Siegfried said as he began preparations to activate his own balance breaker. Targe Kiba yelled as he dashed toward Siegfried and his army of dragon troops mirrored his movements and also closed in on the dangerous chaos swordsman. Halfway through his assault, Kiba realized something was wrong. Despite his increase in numbers and power, Siegfried didn't seem to be weakening in the slightest bit. It was almost as if Kiba was fighting six of him as opposed to only one. Kiba's eyes darted towards his opponent upon realization of the crafty blade master's new trick. Forearms. Kiba said as he gazed upon the forearms coming out of Siegfried's back, which were all holding swords. But something else was different here. Siegfried had ceased using Graham. Hey what's this all about? Why do you have four more arms now? And why have you stopped using such a powerful weapon? Kiba said as he reformed his forces. Ah yes it is quite a powerful blade isn't it? But alas, I don't seem to be able to use it in my balance breaker state. You see, Graham doesn't truly care for my well-being. And the more powerful I become, the less Graham decides to listen to me, and the more it decides to cause me fatal wounds. So I will have to try bring you down with six blades instead, Siegfried said as he began to attack. Attack Kiba yelled as he began his charge once again. With Kiba's new knowledge of Siegfried's secret, he now created more soldiers and gave them more precise movements in order to attempt to disarm the crafty rogue devil. The two warriors' blades danced beautifully as they clashed with one another. Sending sparks with every strike they dealt to each other. The breathing rate of both swordsmen began to grow to a rapid pace, and the conflict was finally closed. Kiba almost fell to the ground as his troops began to disappear. However, he managed to stab his holy demonic sword into the ground to prevent himself from falling. Siegfried had no more weapons in his hands. He had been completely disarmed. All of a sudden, Siegfried reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out what appeared to be a pistol. You truly are an amazing swordsman Kibayudo. Even with Graham, even with my balance breaker, you still managed to push me back. However, Siegfried said as he pointed the pistol towards his neck. Wait what are you? It would be a different story if I could use Graham in my balance breaker state wouldn't it? Siegfried said as he injects the serum into his neck. Siegfried injects the contents of the pistol into his neck. There was a silence. Then Siegfried's body reacts. His body starts to react even more, and his body started to change. Michi Michi. While making a weird and dull sound, the forearms growing from his back become thicker. Each of his fingers start to crumble and merge with the swords they are now holding onto. Then Siegfried himself starts to change. His expression becomes hard and there are veins on his face. His muscles start to move as if he is a different creature, and the hero faction uniform he was wearing was torn apart. The monster who has four arms have now become gigantic. He now looks like a spider monster. And the enormous pressure and creepy aura isn't normal. While having cramps on his face, he smirks. Chaos drive. That's what we call it. We call this doping injection a chaos break. We took the part of the name from balance breaker and juggernaut drive. The low and deep voice. 
even his voice has changed. And now Kiba, it's time to start round 3, Siegfried says as he grabs Kiba with his muscular arms and throws him across the land. It's a monster Kiba says as he tries to dodge Siegfried's multiple slash attacks, despite his lack of energy, making it hard to barely stand. What's wrong? What's wrong? Fight back Knight of Rhea's Grimmery Siegfried said as he began to use Gram again. Damn it he's too quick Kiba thought to himself as he dodged another one of Gram's dangerous strikes. Finally, Kiba found his speed begin to decrease and he was ultimately slashed by Siegfried across his midsection. Kiba groaned in pain and the blow forced him to also cough up blood. All of a sudden, Kiba found himself being pushed down to the ground by Siegfried's monster strengthened forearms which held him in position. Crap is this the end? Am I going to die? Kiba thought to himself as he began to lose both his power and his hope. Flailing violently stuck in Siegfried's terrifying web. Meanwhile. Issei. Issei a voice said making Issei wake up in a white void. That voice it can't be. Issei said as he searched for the source of it. Issei it is. Turn around my son. Another voice said. Issei obeyed the friendly familiar voice, and upon the sight of his dead parents, he could not begin to control the overwhelming emotions that begun to swell up inside him. Mother. Father. Is that really you? Issei questioned in a frightened tone due to his past experience with them. Yes Issei it's us. Now come and give your mother a hug my brave little boy. Issei's mother said as she extended out her welcoming arms. Issei didn't care if this was a trap or not. He would not pass on the opportunity to rush into his mother's welcoming and loving embrace. Even if this was just a dream. The minute Issei closed the distance between them, the teenage boy who had all grown up began to burst into tears as he felt the warm loving sensation from his mother. Issei's parents hugged him tight and led him away like a six-year-old boy again. We're so sorry that you have had to deal with so many hardships since we died. I love you Issei. My little boy Issei's mother said as she began to shed tears herself. It must have been tough for you my son. But I'm so proud of how far you have come Issei's father said also beginning to tear up. Mum, dad. Issei said quietly after a while. Yes what is it Issei? Tell what's on your mind champ, we are here for you. You don't think I'm a monster because I became a demon right? You don't think I'm evil and you still love me right? Issei said unable to bear what response he may get as that painful flashback flooded in his head. Issei was taken by complete surprise when his mother kissed him on the forehead and pulled him into a warm hug again. Whether you're a devil or not, you'll always be my little boy you're not a bad person, I love you, and I'm so happy you haven't wasted your second chance at life, Issei's mother said as she hugged him tighter. Issei broke down again and enjoyed the warmth of his parents. He finally felt like he had been saved. After Issei's parents coerced him into resting for a while, Issei suddenly sat bolt upright and had a bad feeling. Issei you must rest for now. You can't stay unconscious for too much longer or you'll worry your friends. Issei's mother said as Issei activated his sacred gear. One second mum, there is one thing I have to do before I go back. I fear if I don't do this now, it will be too late. Issei said as his sacred gear began to glow in a burning red light. Ascalon Issei yelled as the dragon slayer blade disappeared from the gauntlet and Issei finally closed his eyes and reawakened back into his body again. Kiba's skin was drenched in sweat as he helplessly awaited for his imminent death. Siegfried removed his arms from Kiba who he noticed had lost his will to fight back. And with a smirk on that evil twisted mug of his, he proceeded to end this battle with one final strike. All of a sudden, a bright light began to shine in Kiba's hand, and with this energizing feeling, Kiba took the gift he received in hand and thrust with all of his might. The beast cried out in agony as Kiba removed Ascalon from Siegfried's now blood-soaked eye socket. Ahhhhhhhh Siegfried yelled as Kiba suddenly got his second wind. With no time to lose, Kiba picked up the discarded Durandal with one hand and used Ascalon in his other hand. This sort I knew it. Kiba said as he smiled thinking of his best friend who always proved to have his back. With the power of Durandal and with the bond I share with Issei Kun, I will end this fight right now, Kiba said as he effortlessly cleaved through two of Siegfried's ginormous arms. Am you Siegfried yelled as he attempted to slice with Graham. Huh? Siegfried said as he helplessly tried to manifest its incredible power. It's over Siegfried Kiba yelled as he charged the startled cow's brigade member and delivered a ferocious 30-hit combo on his person. Siegfried was frozen in place by the shock of Graham's supremacy over him. The sword was turning against him. Take this Kiba launched himself into the air and came down like a bolt of lightning on top of Siegfried splitting him in two. Siegfried's monstrous form began to return to normal as it rested in a pool of never-ending blood. Impossible. It seems that Graham has recognized you as its new master. Siegfried said, and with that, those appeared to be his last words. Siegfried closed his eyes and never opened them again. Chapter 41 A Mask to Cover Up the Sadness. Let's go on a date. Rhea's POV. 
It has been three days since we left heaven after the crime force dragon Grendel failed to force his say into his juggernaut drive form. Using the image of his parents to pull off such a twisted and diabolical scheme. Just thinking about what that bastard did to my say is enough to make my destructive power rise to the surface. But that's in the past. At the moment, I'm worried about my say more than ever. Since that day, Issei hasn't spoken a word about what happened back then, and he just smiles whenever I bring up the subject, saying that I don't have to worry, and he is just fine. But I see through that smile. Issei is hurting. He is hurting so much that he doesn't know how to act around everyone. I fear that he may eventually shut me out and go down his own path once again. No, I can't afford to get depressed like this Issei is unable to open up. But that doesn't mean I can act powerless, I have to do my best to show Issei I am there for him. I returned home from the supermarket and set the bags down in the kitchen, where I was greeted by Asia who kindly offered to put them away and see to it that they were placed in the appropriate location. I thanked Asia and made my way up the staircase. I couldn't help but walk past Issei's bedroom door as I proceeded on my way to my study at the Haidu household. And it took every bit of my willpower I had to prevent myself from knocking on his door and pulling him into my arms so I can comfort him and help him through these hard times. But I managed to do it. As I was just about to walk away from Issei's room, I heard a sudden sound which made me spin around to attention. There he is, have you got a second? Issei said causing me to be caught off guard. Seeing his face after thinking such saddening things made my mood take a spiral turn for the better. What's wrong Issei? I simply asked and awaited for him to answer. I was wondering, would you like to go out on a date with me today? I feel so cooped up inside and I would appreciate it if you came with me. Issei said to me with his usual smile. I was stunned and puzzled. What should I say in a situation like this? I don't want to selfishly enjoy myself when Issei is so sad. But I know that I can't possibly waste this opportunity to comfort him. So I said what I wanted to say the most. Of course I'd love to go out with you Issei, but are you sure you don't want the rest of the group to come with us? I can't believe I said that I'm such an idiot. No that's okay Arias, I was kind of hoping that we could go. Just the two of us. Issei said to me with the cutest blush on his face. I was happy beyond words Issei was personally inviting me out no Akeno or Asia. Just me I couldn't help but feel so delighted that I was chosen to accompany Issei out. I'll go get ready then. I look forward to it. I said after I kissed my cute and handsome pawn on the cheek. Don't take too long okay? I've wanted to go on a date with you for quite some time now. Issei said to me making my heart skip a beat. I won't be too long I promise. I happily replied as I raced into the room Issei just exited to choose my outfit for our date. I couldn't have got to my closet any quicker even if I was being chased by the whole old Satan army. My feet practically glided along the floor despite it being carpeted. After all, this is my first proper date and to make things more incredible, it was with Issei it was at that moment, I wondered to myself if Issei had ever been on a date before. I notice how he is very popular amongst his peers at school. And with further confirmation from Sona, it has been that way since he entered Kuo Academy. I shook off the thought as this didn't matter to me. Because I am Issei's girlfriend and even if many may lay their eyes on him, his eyes will only gaze at me. I began to scream like a normal teenage girl as the face of the man I love stared back at me from my closet door. I realized that there was no time to lose and began preparations for my outfit. After several rejections, I settled with a red striped sleeveless top and white trousers. I found myself wearing red a lot more since I met Issei. The Red Dragon Emperor. Even before I became his girlfriend, I unconsciously found myself wearing this color, as if my heart was trying to tell me all along that Issei was the only man for me. With my preparations complete, I grabbed my purse and rushed down the stairs to reunite with Issei, who was standing by the doorway waiting for me. I took a moment to stare at the dashing good looks of my most precious evil piece as he leaned against the wall. Issei was wearing his favorite black leather jacket on top of his lucky red vest, which I admit I have stolen from him from time to time when he has gone out to make contracts. I get so lonely without him there. So shall we go then? Issei said to me with a huge smile and with his hand extended out towards me. I grabbed his hand instantly and felt his strong hand grip it once I welcomed his touch. And thus, my date with Issei begun. I happily held on to Issei's hand as we walked the streets of our quiet and mostly peaceful town. I carefully watched bystanders who began to lovingly gaze at my Issei, and this caused me to latch onto his arm to establish my position as his girl. For most of the girls, this did the trick and they resumed their activities. But there were some who dared to still stare at my Issei despite my actions. I just realized after we passed them that I was being a bother to Issei, because I grabbed him so suddenly, this would surely make it more awkward for him to walk. But Issei just smiled as we proceeded onwards. His facial expression made my heart race when I saw the blush stained on his cheeks. 
Is he nervous? Don't tell me I'm actually a Say's first date after all. Um Ria's, so where do you want to go? I'm sorry this is my first date so I don't have any experience. Issei said to me making my mood bright and magnificently. Anywhere is fine with me as long as I'm with you I said with such happiness as I blindly followed the path we took together. Then let's go have fun Issei said to me as he lifted me onto his shoulders. I was surprised by Issei's sudden actions at first, but it wasn't long until I found myself laughing away as he raced into town carrying me. Every moment I spent with Issei was so magical, and I couldn't believe how lucky I was to be the girl enjoying herself by his side. The first place we went was a clothing store where I happily picked out various t-shirts for him. His face really brightened up when I found a dragon bracelet for him. I still remember all of the girls staring at me when Issei kissed me on the forehead and told me. I love it Rias. Thank you. I began to feel so relieved when I saw his smile this time. Issei was really having fun with me. I no longer saw that fake smile that he has been wearing for days now. After this, we went to various other stores and finished our shopping spree at the nearest arcade. We played loads of games such as air hockey, basketball, and arcade games which surprisingly became very competitive. After I returned to Issei with drinks, Issei introduced me to an unknown guest. What's this? I said as I questioned him about the cute little friend he had in his hands. I want it for you on the crane machine. I figured you may like it. Issei said to me as he handed me the stuffed animal. It was a teddy bear with devil horns and a spiked tail. It's so cute thank you Issei. I said as I kissed him on the cheek and began to hug my new friend. After we exited the arcade, Issei and I went to a restaurant to get something to eat. And as the sun began to set, our date began to reach its end. Wow it's so beautiful. I said as I gazed from the view Issei took me to. This was my family's favorite spot after we finished playing at the festival. We would always watch the fireworks from here. Issei said making me notice his eyes begin to tear up. Issei. It's okay. I said, but Issei wiped his eyes and displayed his fake smile again. This meant that Issei was locking away his emotions because he didn't want to upset me. Sorry it's nothing. I'm going to get us some drinks I'll be right back. Issei left straight away running towards the vending machines we passed on the way here. I let out a sigh as I lay on the grass and began to worry about my Issei. I wish he would open up to me. I want to help Issei smile again. Oh girl are you alone right now? A voice said making me sit up and notice the group of strangers who came close to me whilst I was lost in thought. What's this she's crying? What's the matter did your boyfriend dump you? The second male said showing his desires clearly through his words. Don't worry about that, come play with us. We just got paid so we can have a lot of fun. The third said to me. His expression and his aura suggested to me he was the ringleader. No thank you, I have no desire to go anywhere with you people. I'm waiting for someone. I said hoping this would display my message. Don't be so stingy, we just want to help a crying girl forget the jerk who dumped her. The ringleader said. I couldn't help but be greatly angered when he referred to my essay in that way. Before I knew it, I was standing up and struggling to hold back my anger. Why are you glaring at us like that? The man in the grey top said. You think you people are anything like the man I love? Ridiculous you're not even a one-fifth of my essay. What was that you bitch? I don't like your attitude come with me the ringleader said as he didn't hesitate to grab my arm and try to pull me away. Let me go this instant I said as I held back my rage by the smallest wall I could. It's time to teach you some respect the man said as he prepared to strike me. I won't have a choice, I may have to use my power to send them away. Hey punk, I'm going to say this one so pay attention take your hands off Rias this instant, Issei said as he crushed the two cans in his hand with ease. Oh what's your problem punk? You want things to get ugly. The ringleader said as he went over to Issei and grabbed him by his jacket collar. You don't want to do that. Issei said as the ringleader continued to get in his face. Oh you think you're tough punk? What right do you have to pick a fight huh? Issei effortlessly removed a thug's hand from his person and then grabbed the threatening man's hand and crushed his feeble grip with his superior strength. And what right do you have raising a hand to my woman, Issei said as he began to increase his strength on his suffering hand. Hey let go of him punk the other two said as they rushed to the rescue, only to stop in their tracks and break out in a sweat. I'd advise you to take your friend and get out of my sight before you make me mad. Issei said after he released the thug and began to display his frightening and powerful dragon bloodlust aura. We're so sorry they said as they rushed off into the distance with their tails between their legs. Bastards Issei said as he came over to comfort me. Thank you Issei. As expected of my Issei. I said as we sat down together and I hugged his arm again. Issei's face was emotionless. His mask was back on again. And I wasn't going to let it stay on my Issei's face anymore. I didn't hesitate as I made my next move. 
I made him look at me and as he began to question what was wrong, I wrapped my hands around his neck and connected my lips with his. Rias. He said as I pulled him close to me after we disconnected. I say, you don't have to keep your emotions bottled up when you're with me. I listen to anything you have to say. So please don't act happy when I know you're hurting so much inside I said, and Issa in response, hugged me tight. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry Rias. It's just so painful I saw my parents after so long and I was so scared that they really would turn me away and see me as a monster. But when my parents happily accepted me for who I am, I felt so happy. And I wanted to talk to you about the feelings I was going through. But I couldn't because when I open up, it's so hard to pull myself together again, Issei said as his tears dampened my chest. It's okay, I'm here for you Issei. You don't have to act strong all of the time. When you feel sad or lonely, just say so and I will reassure you how much you are loved by everyone Issei. I love you more than anything so you don't need to hold back. Your Rias is here to make the pain go away. I said as I began to tear up and hug him tight. It feels like such a heavy weight is lifted off my shoulders. Thank you Rias. I really feel like I can leave my pathetic self to you. Issei said as he let out all the bottled up emotions that he had held in for the past few days. After Issei pulled himself together, we sat side by side on the grass with our hands intertwined. I had a lot of fun today Issei. Thank you so much I'll treasure this day. I said as I leaned on his muscular shoulder. Me too Rias. I'm so glad you're mine Rias. Kind of ironic though. I'm supposed to be your servant after all. Issei said making me pout. I don't care about silly things like that Issei I love you with of all of my heart. And I don't care what anybody else says about our relationship. I said as I squeezed his arm tight. Same here Rias Issei said as he held stroked my hair. All of a sudden, my phone began to sound off ruining our perfect moment. In an irritated fashion, I removed my phone from my purse and checked my email. What's wrong Rias? Issei asked me as I gazed at the message with a serious look. The Keno is going to need your help more than anything Issei. So he's coming to the human world is he? Yes. Barakia Lakeno's father is coming to visit the human world with Odin this week. I said as I ended my thoughts on my perfect day and instead changed my attention to my best friend who was going to experience cruel times this week. It was then I felt a warm sensation on my lips. I felt Issei's comfort as he relaxed my tension with a loving and warm kiss. Don't worry Rias, I will see to it that Akeno doesn't lose her smile. You can count on me. Issei said making all of my worries wash away. Because I knew that with Issei's words alone, that was enough to calm my nerves. I trust my Issei more than anything. And I knew at that moment when he said those words to me, everything was going to be fine. And Akeno would not return to how she once was before. Chapter 42 The Dark Wings Which Ensnare Her Heart so these are all the papers I have to sign. Issei inquired as he handed the pen back to the red-haired demon lord as he sat at his desk. Yes thank you Issei-kun. With your signature, we can now commence Project Crimson Dragon the TV show for all the little devils, Serzich has said making Issei sigh. I still can't believe you managed to convince me to go through with this. But it's for the children so I guess I will let one of your crazy schemes slip by this time. Issei said sitting down opposite Serzich's. So has your present for Rias been finished yet? Serzich's asked with a grin on his face. Yes, it took a while, but I finished it just before I came to see you. Issei replied as he patted his shirt pocket. I bet Rias will be pleased. But I have your information you asked for. Serzich's said turning serious all of a sudden. When is he arriving? Issei asked as he listened to every word Serzich's had to offer. Barakiel and Odin are said to be arriving in the human world at approximately 2 p.m. today. Serzich's said making Issei look a bit worried. I see, then if I am to keep my promise to Rias, I will have to act today before he arrives. Thank you for the info Serzich's, then I will be going. Issei said as he left his chair and headed for the door. Wait Issei Kun, I have something else to inform you about. Serzich's said making Issei turn around. What is it? Issei replied feeling obligated to listen to what the all-powerful demon had to say. You see, another high-class demon exam is occurring soon, and I was thinking Serzich's said being instantly interrupted by Issei. Serzich's, I told you before, I'm in no rush to make my rank public, let alone increase it higher. Issei said with a gloomy expression. But Issei Kun, I can't stand seeing you ridiculed and cursed because everybody believes you to be a low-class rookie, as opposed to your true rank, Serzich's said, making Issei put his hand on the door. I learned all of that knowledge to not waste this new life by getting myself killed the instant I tried to venture out into the world of the demons. But everything is different now, I have friends, a family, and I'm not ready to leave them yet I want to stay by Rhea's side, for as long as I possibly can I know I have the knowledge, and that I could pass both the high class practical and theory exams, with a 100% score. But I don't care about my status. 
As long as I can stay by her side, then I don't care what others call me. I'm happy being her pawn. Issei said now holding back tears. I'm sorry Issei-kun, I just spouted it without thinking. Please forgive me. Serzicha said to the Red Dragon Emperor as he pulled himself together. It's okay, I have to be going now. Please excuse me. Issei said as he exited out of the Demon Lord's office via magic circle. Issei Haidu straightened himself up and wiped away his tears as he arrived back home. The brown-haired devil was just about to open the front door when all of a sudden, an energetic red-haired girl he knew all too well, pounced on him as he attempted to go inside. Good morning Rias. Issei said now startled by Rias' surprise attack. You're real mean leaving me to wake up alone like that Issei. Where have you been? Rhea said pouting as Issei smiled at her outburst of silly behavior. Issei began to laugh, and a warm feeling began to surface inside his chest, telling him this is where he belonged. Hey don't laugh at me Humph you're the worst leaving without saying a word to your master. You've made me mad so I'm ignoring you for the rest of the day. Rhea said as she turned away from Issei and folded her arms. Issei smiled and wrapped his arms around her. I'm sorry, I had to sign the contracts for your brother. And besides, I had to pick something up for you. Issei said as he placed the small box in her hand. Rias turned her attention away from Issei and instead focused on the small box he just gave to her. Rias' mood took a complete reverse when she suddenly screamed and jumped into Issei's arms when she put two and two together. Thank you Issei I love you so much Rias said planting kisses on every visible part of his face. Do you want me to put it on for you? Issei said as picked up the mysterious item from the box it was concealed in. Rias nodded with tears streaming down her eyes and held out her hand. Issei smiled and slipped the ring on Rhea's third finger on her left hand. Rhea stared in awe at the magnificent craftsmanship of Issei's secret project. Issei's secret engagement ring for Rhea's was a solid gold ring with a crimson dragon guarding a huge ruby stone. It had the date of the proposal and their names inscribed along the side and the date that they both met on the other side. It's so beautiful thank you Issei I can't believe you made this yourself, Rhea said as she giggled whilst staring at the ring, realizing the symbolism behind it. Thanks it wasn't easy it took me quite a while, but it looks like it was worth it. Issei said when suddenly Rias pounced on him and kissed him deeply and passionately on the lips. As expected of the man I chose to marry. Rias said as they both stood up. Issei smiled and then decided to change the subject to something else he was tasked to do. How's Akeno-san feeling? Issei asked making Rias' happy mood shift to a more worrisome one. She's been having nightmares lately, and with Barakiel soon to be arriving, she's pretty afraid. Rhea said suddenly being startled when Issei pulled her in close. Don't worry, I have a plan. But you're going to have to trust me okay? Issei said making Rhea's blush but nod. Okay I'm not going to give up until Akeno-san is smiling today. So please just wait for me okay? Issei said making Rhea's ponder his request, but inevitably she agreed to believe in him. Issei kissed his beloved fiancé on the forehead and made his way towards the kitchen. There he saw Akeno washing a kitchen knife in the sink. Issei tapped on her shoulder and found himself with a blade inches away from his eye, but he made no attempts to dodge he just let it stop before making impact. The candle looked towards it Issei with enraged and bloodthirsty eyes. Which quickly shifted back to her normal gentle self. Oh Issei-kun, I'm so sorry. Akeno said as she quickly took the blade away from his face and put it in the sink. The distressed hybrid devil looked down at her hands in disbelief of what she almost did. Good morning Akeno-san. Issei kindly replied to her showing he wasn't upset with her in the slightest. The Kendo held her own hand to attempt to stop the pair of them shaking and looked down towards the floor. I'm sorry Issei-kun, breakfast is running a bit late today, so please wait a little longer. Akeno said as began to turn her back towards him again. Just as Akeno was about to resume her preparations for breakfast, she realized that her hands ceased their shaking. And the cold and numb feeling that was once there had been replaced a warm and gentle touch instead. Issei-kun. Akeno said as she now stared at him with a blush as he held her hand. Good timing, I was hoping you hadn't have eaten yet. Let's go out on a date and take a break today okay? Issei said with a warm and convincing smile. The DD date. Akeno said suddenly taken by surprise with Issei's proclamation. Yeah, that's right. Just the two of us. I've noticed you haven't been your cheery self lately, so I'm making it my mission today to make you smile and forget all of your worries. Issei said making Akeno panic. But I still have the housework today after all it's my turn today. Akeno said as she despite not wanting to, tried to release herself from Issei's grasp. Don't worry about that Akeno, Kiba has already offered to take over so you can relax. Right Kiba. Issei said to the knight who now entered the room. Of course, leave it to me. Kiba said as he now cleared the second stage to help Issei with Akeno's worries. 
Eh well if you really want to take me out then how can I possibly say no, I'll go get ready, Akeno said as she for the first time in a while, had a spring in her steps, as she rushed to her room. Thanks Kiba I owe you one. Issei said to Kiba as he began to get the tools necessary to make breakfast. No Issei kun, it is I who owes you. Please focus your attention on the vice president today. Help her like you have helped all of us in the past. Kiba replied making Issei smile. Then I won't disappoint you Kiba. Issei said as he headed off to tell Ria's his plan, and then quickly made his way to the front door after doing so. Shall we go then Akeno? Issei said making Akeno blush. Hey Akeno? She replied lost for words. What's wrong Akeno? You asked me to call you without honorifics when it was just the two of us. Issei said now taking her hand. But shouldn't we tell Ria's where we are going? Akeno replied feeling very nervous and vulnerable right now. Don't worry, I spoke to her before we left. Issei replied. Was she okay with it? Akeno asked making Issei smile. Well I guess okay is one way of putting it. Flashback. A date. Why are you taking Akeno on a date? Even when you have Miri as said in a very startled and upset tone. Issei grinned and pulled her into his chest. It's not what you think okay. You ask me to help Akeno cheer up. So first I have to make her feel safe so she can tell me what's wrong. Issei said making Ria's hide her face in his chest. But Issei is my Issei. I don't want to share. Ria's mumbled as she put her arms around his back. Issei smiled again and tilted her chin up towards him, and without a moment's hesitation, he kissed her on the lips and made all of her worries and doubt for him disappear. You have nothing to worry about, but your side is the only place I truly belong. Issei said as he looked deep into her eyes which were now as calm as the ocean. Ria simply replied with a simple okay when she suddenly hugged him again. End of flashback. Well then if Ria's has given the okay, I guess there is nothing holding me back anymore. Let's go have some fun Akeno said now taking the initiative. Meanwhile back at the Haidu residence. Ria's is happily humming whilst she is organizing her paperwork in the living room. Good morning Ria's. Asia said as she entered the room. Good morning to you to Asia Ria's said in a cheery tone. You seem pretty happy this morning. Asia replied with a smile. Well I will show you why I am feeling so energetic today. Behold Ria said as she happily showed off her new and customized engagement ring. Wow it's so pretty President Ria's. Asia said as she joined Ria's with admiring its quality and charm. There you go again calling me President Ria's. I already told you that I see you as my little sister. So your big sis would be very sad if you didn't drop the formalities with her. I understand. Big sis Ria's. Asia said in a very shy manner. That's much better Ria said surprising her with a hug. By the way Ria's, where is Issei san? Asia asked as she poured herself some tea. Oh Issei has gone out for a bit with Akeno. Ria's replied normally deciding to believe in Issei. Hey you mean a date? Asia asked now panicking. What's wrong Asia? Ria's replied. You let Akeno go out with Issei alone without following them? What if Akeno decides to take him for herself in your absence? Asia proclaimed now making Ria's worry too. You're right let's go Asia Ria said now creating a makeshift disguise. We're going with you. Kaneko said who was standing next to Zenovia and a paper bag equipped Gasper. How did the both of you change so fast? Ria's asked now staring at Kaneko who seemed to be wearing a tiger wrestling mask. Is this really the time to be asking that? Come on we have to go before Issei Senpai is devoured by Akeno Kaneko said now leaving the house with a timid vampire in tow. And just like that, the rest of the girls chazzed after Issei now undergoing their secret espionage mission. Meanwhile, everything seemed to be going very well with Issei and Akeno on their date. They visited various shops including the arcade. They had both breakfast and lunch together. And Akeno was smiling so much that her cheeks were beginning to hurt a bit. But she did not care in the slightest. The date was in high gear and nothing seemed to be upsetting Akeno in the slightest. Well that is until an uninvited guest came crashing in and ruining the mood. What are you doing here? Akeno said with malice in her words as she clung to Issei's arm. I am here as Lord Auden's bodyguard. And I will throw that question right back at you. What are you doing out here alone with that filthy security? Barakiel said making Akeno cross. What did you just say? Akeno said now clinging onto his say tighter. You heard me he's a filthy low class devil who has so many girls flocking around him. He's a dirty bastard who does not deserve you Barakiel said now beginning to get closer to her. How dare you say that about his say Kun Akeno said now shouting at the fallen angel. Enough Akeno stop this foolish behavior at once let go of that man and come with me right now Barakiel said now grabbing her arm. No I don't want to let go of Issei Kun. Suddenly, the tension began to simmer down when Barakiel felt a strong force on his arm. Let go of her Barakiel. Issei said with a serious glare. You filthy security know your place Barakiel said now aiming a punch towards Issei's face. Issei made no efforts to dodge. 
Instead he calmly stopped Barakiel's fist dead in its tracks. You damn security you think a pathetic low class like you is fit to be by my daughter's side. Or is it that you're still the same as ever and you're out to kill her? Barakiel said now beginning to enrage the girls who secretly lay in wait in a nearby bush. Issei sighed and then smiled. I'm always having that label thrown at me. You're just a low class devil and to be honest, I was fine with being called that. I didn't care about my rank or my status. As long as I could stay with everyone, I didn't care. But if you're so interested in learning the truth then pay attention. I will tell you how I really rank, but only once I don't like to use my status for power or respect, so pay attention Issei said, now making Barakiel startled. What are you talking about Issei-kun? Akeno said as she and the rest of the girls obeyed Issei and listened carefully to what he had to say. I wasn't trying to keep it secret. I just didn't care if people thought I was a low-class devil that's all. As long as I could live happily with everyone. With Akeno, Zenovia, Asia, Kaneko-chan, Kiba and Rias. I didn't care what others thought of me. I just wanted to protect everyone. But if it's for the sake of you leaving Akeno to me, I will tell you my true title, so you can be assured I won't let anyone else who Akeno cares about die, I will protect her so listen up Barakiel I am in fact a devil who is a top middle class. What? But that's not all, I have within me the knowledge and the means to become a high class devil, without there being even a slim chance I would fail, Issei said, surprising everybody there expect Lord Auden, who just grinned. Barakiel, let's go. Lord Auden. Those girls aren't going to enjoy themselves without my company so come on to the booby bar, Lord Auden said, making sure that Barakiel followed him away from the tenacious dragon, who would not have dared to back down. Akeno are you okay? Issei asked the girl who was currently shaking. I'll be okay. But can we go somewhere more private? Akeno said as she pointed to the building next to them. It was at that moment Issei realized where they were. Issei at first panicked when he realized that Akeno was suggesting they enter the love hotel next to them, but Issei decided to take her hand and take her inside. Feeling it would be the best place for her to calm down. In the hotel. I'll go take a shower first. Akeno you just try to relax and I will be done soon. Issei said as he left the room to begin his cleansing. Issei stood under the steaming water with his eyes closed as he dwelled in thought. What do I do? How can I save Akeno? Issei thought to himself unaware of the intruder about to strike him from behind. All of a sudden, Issei felt a soft sensation press up against his back. Akeno. Issei said when he realized that the crafty devil had stripped down and snuck in the shower with him. Hey Issei-kun, will you help me forget everything? Akeno said as she began to trace her hands all down his body. Akeno what are you doing? Issei said as Akeno willingly began to caress every part of his body. Her hand eventually tracing down his abdomen. No this won't save her Issei thought to himself as Akeno selfishly explored every crevice of his body. Akeno this isn't right. Please we have to stop. Issei said now upsetting Akeno. Why? Am I not pretty? Do you think that these wings make me ugly like that man? Like Raynor? Akeno said making Issei realize how damaged Akeno was right now. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Issei said as he couldn't help but hug her. I don't want to be alone anymore, Akeno said with tears in her eyes. Akeno couldn't hold herself back anymore, and with Issei distracted, she daringly pounced on Issei and combined her lips with his. Issei suddenly faded out of his dilemma smashing down the wall which prevented him from coming up with a plan to save Akeno. I created this technique to help Rias when she had something troubling inside herself. But it looks like I will have to test it out on Akeno first. Issei thought to himself as begun his plan. Issei closed his eyes and began to concentrate his magic power sharing a portion of it whilst Akeno was connected to him. Dragon Perception. All of a sudden, memories of Akeno's childhood began to rush into Akeno's and Issei's mind. Flashback. Hey mummy, do you think daddy loves me? Little Akeno said whilst she sat on her mother's lap. Yes, Akeno. Your daddy loves you very much. Shuri replied with a warm smile. Yea then when papa comes home, I want to play with him all day long, little Akeno said with a bright smile. Second flashback. Wow papa your wings are so big, Akeno said as she washed her father's black colossal wings. Is that so? Thank you Akeno. But don't you think they are scary? Barakiel asked as she continued to wash them. Not one bit Papa's wings are beautiful they sparkle in the water, Akeno said with a happy smile as she embraced him lovingly. Final flashback. Why weren't you here dad? Why didn't you protect mummy? Akeno. They said it's because she fell in love with a fallen angel, this is all your fault dad I hate fallen angels I hate you, Akeno said as she wallowed in despair. Flashback over. Akeno opened her eyes and saw Issei staring at her so willingly, as if he could see through her inside and out. Issei-kun. Akeno said as Issei pulled her into another hug. You really love your father don't you Akeno? Eh? Issei-kun don't tell me. 
Yes, I saw your memories and your past. It was such a tragedy what happened to your mother Akeno. You've been scarred by her death to the point where you claimed you wanted to be left alone. But in reality, you were scared weren't you? You needed somebody to hold you like this and tell you everything would be okay. Issei said still continuing to embrace her. Issei Kun Akeno said as she began to cry on his shoulder. Akeno you can't continue to live in the past. I know it's painful, but your father is still alive and he loves you. I know it won't be easy, but I will be here alongside you to help you through it all. You have family that care about you Akeno, and you need to make your mother smile again. Issei said making Akeno break down. Issei said no more. Instead, he just held her and let Akeno be the frightened and vulnerable teenage girl she continuously suppressed inside herself. I promise to protect you and our friends, so you will never experience a tragedy and painful memory ever again. Issei said as he let her cry her heart out. Chapter 43 One year with the Gremory's Issei's anniversary surprise. Ria's POV. But that's not all, I have within me the knowledge and the means to become a high-class devil without there being even a slim chance I would fail. Those words are still running through my head as I stared at the relaxed and at peace expression on Issei's face as he slept next to me. Issei could become a high-class devil. Wait does that mean Issei will leave me soon? Does this mean that others will try to steal him away from me, now his rank has gone public in the underworld? Normal POV. These constant worries kept flowing through Rhea's mind as she ever so carefully slipped her way out of Issei's warm embrace, as much as it pained her to do so. The King of the Grimmeries shook her head back and forth, realizing that she had no time to be worrying such thoughts right now. After all, today was a very important day for both her and Issei. Rhea still couldn't comprehend how it had already been a year since Issei became her pawn and joined her family. With all the events and sudden death battles becoming a constant occurrence for the Gremory household throughout the year, Rhea's found it rather difficult to keep track of the days that seemed to fly by when she spent them with her chosen love. Rhea's suddenly felt cold even after she proceeded to get dressed this being the consequence of her leaving Issei's side far too early. Rhea's pouted as she got dressed and left a note by Issei's pillow. Trying her best to hold herself back from stripping off and climbing back in bed with him. But she managed to hold herself back doing such a setback. She had work to do today. The ruined princess trod ever so quietly out of Issei and her shared bedroom on the account of Issei's very sensitive powerful hearing senses, would pick up the minute she uttered a word. With her escape out of the room successful, Rhea's made her way downstairs, where the rest of the peerage stood in the passage by the doorway dressed in formal attire. Are all the preparations complete big sister Rhea's? Asia asked as Rhea's met up with the rest of the group. Asia Argento was wearing a turquoise dress which reached to her barely visible ankles and her matching colored high heels. The former sister also wore golden earrings, feeling the need to wear some other form of jewelry, as opposed to the cross necklace which she was forced to leave in her room. Yes, I managed to leave the note by Issei without waking him. All steps have been completed. So now we can move on to phase 2 of Issei's surprise event. Rhea said as she put her hair up into a ponytail. Rhea's Gremory was wearing a crimson dress with a gold necklace hanging from her neck and of course, her newly crafted dragon engagement ring still on her finger. Are is he still sleeping? Then maybe I'll go give him a kiss while his guard is down. And maybe after that, Akeno said with reddened cheeks and her asmote expression showing. Akeno was wearing an outfit true to her Japanese self, as opposed to the rest of the girls who were wearing dresses, Akeno decided to wear a black kimono instead. Her hair like Rhea's Gremory's, was placed in a ponytail. No way I was holding myself back with everything I could to not give Issei a kiss or even a hug, if I'm deprived of his warmth first thing in the morning, then so is everyone else Rhea's strongly proclaimed with matching reddening cheeks. It will be fine right? Just a little kiss. Okeno said making Rhea's get frustrated. No means no Okeno you idiot. Rhea said sticking her tongue out at her. Well now seems like a good opportunity for me to get Issei's seat. Zenovia said before she was stopped by a huge impenetrable magic circle, created by both the president and vice president of the occult research group. Zenovia the Knight of the Grimmeries was wearing a sapphire dress to match her hair, but unlike the other dresses, her dress like Kaneko's snow white dress, only reached her knees. Whereas the other Knight of the Grimmeries was wearing a tuxedo. Truly marking this occasion as a very important and well-dressed one. Cut it out Zenovia they both said making Kiba, Asia, Gaspar and Kaneko laugh. What's that noise? Everyone you're already awake. Issei called from his room making Rhea's panic. Not good everyone into the magic circle hurry. Rhea said in a much quieter voice and teleported all of her servants, leaving Issei behind to wonder if what he heard was in fact his imagination. Or if he was too late to greet them. My guess nobody is there after all. I can't sense anybody in the house. What's this? Issei said as he twisted his body to read the note left by Rhea's on his pillow. You're my precious and treasured pawn. My brother has asked us all to report to the underworld for a sudden meeting. 
The dress code is formal so please wear your finest suit. We have gone ahead so you could get some rest from all the hard work you have done. P.S. I love you so much my precious is xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
The sapphire-haired knight Zenovia stepped up next. They say, when we were enemies and even after I upset Asia in front of you, you came to me and Arena and gave us food. Not because you wished for anything in return, you simply did it because you are a good person who cares for others. You even helped us take down Kakabiel when you deemed it too dangerous for us to do alone. I can confidently say that if it weren't for your kindness and your power, that I would most definitely would be dead right now. Which is why I now swear on my sword as a knight that I will protect you and always follow your will. Zenovia said also happily accepting a hug from Issei. I will obtain your seed for my future dragon devil children. Zenovia whispered to him as she bit his ear and left the stage to be with the others. Issei smiled awkwardly and then reverted his attention to Akeno, Kineko and Rias who awaited their turn. A nervous white cat rook marched on ahead and said what was currently on her mind. Issei senpai, if it wasn't for you, I would still be weak. I was always scared to use my power as a Nekamata because I was afraid it would change me and make me turn out just like my big sister. But for you, I can confidently use this power and fight alongside you wherever you may go Kaneko said, even with her normally cold attitude happily accepted Issei's embrace and pat on her head. I'm counting on you to back me up when my back's against the wall okay. Issei said to which Kaneko responded with a nod and a meow. Rias was struck with sudden stage fright and so Akeno went ahead first. Issei, ever since I became a devil, I had always planned to throw away my identity as a fallen angel and refuse to use the power for I was scared to use it. It was because of my mother's family's hatred for fallen angels that she was murdered and me almost along with her. But if you're by my side, I really feel that I can become stronger and fully master this power and as a result, fully trust in myself and those who wish to help me. Okeno said as she rushed into the Red Dragon Emperor's arms. Rias burned away her cold feet and pushed on ahead. They say, for as long as I could remember, I have always wanted to meet the man of my dreams and to fall in love with him. However, no man I have encountered even had the ability to make my heart skip a beat. That is until I met you Issei. You stole my heart from the minute you took down that petty thief without a moment's hesitation. I had always wondered when I was a little girl who my brother rescued and was keeping so secretly within his chambers, and I am so glad that it was you my brother chose to be my one and only precious pawn. When you saved me from a terrible marriage with Razor Phoenix, I fell for you even more, and I couldn't stand keeping my feelings from you any longer, I love you Hayato Issei, and I am so proud to call you my future husband, Rhea said as she embraced him the tightest, and then in front of everyone, kissed him ever so passionately on the stage. I love you too Rhea's. I will always stay by your side and become the mightiest pawn the world has ever seen. Issei said as he wrapped his arms around her. Rhea's crimson hair tickled Issei's nose as she whispered into his ear. I will give you your special present later tonight. Look forward to it. Rhea said as held onto his arm and led him to the middle of the room. The wooden doors once again opened and now Serzich's and Grafia, along with Milikas entered the room pushing a trolley with a grimmery style anniversary cake engagement cake. Well then let's all toast to Issei. Rhea said as she raised her glass. Issei they all cheered as a sudden roar of power began to shake the castle. All of a sudden, a huge gaping hole was forged within the castle walls, revealing the outside world. What the hell was that? Issei said as he suddenly got his answer as both he and Grafia looked on in both fear and anger. Euclid Lucifuge. The big brother. Grafia said as she suddenly froze in fear. What have you come here for Euclid? Don't tell me you dare to try attack my darling Issei. Rhea said as she suddenly held him so tightly. I'm afraid not. Our target this time is you go kill Rhea's Gremory Euclid shouted, causing a huge pack of you rogue devils to charge for Rhea's. Dragon shot Issei shouted blasting the devils to smithereens as he vaporized them in his balance breaker state. As expected of the Securite. Euclid said as Issei now aggressively stood in front of the ruined princess. Just try to lay a finger on Rhea's and I will annihilate you all, I won't let you harm one hair on her head, Issei said as his boosted gear began to boost his power. Everyone, proceed with the plan Operation Crimson Extraction. Euclid said as the Gremories prepared for battle. Chapter 44 Euclid's Master Plan. I won't let you hurt my fiancé. As the glow of Issei's boosted gear shined brightly, the Red Dragon Emperor assessed his surroundings. Only to come to the conclusion that they were vastly outnumbered. Issei couldn't afford to let his guard down. Not with all the powerful opponents who suddenly made an appearance at what was previously a peaceful and joyful occasion. However, Issei had come to learn due to the darkness of his past that times of peace are almost instantly interrupted by a world of despair and disorder. Frightened young devils were covering their ears from the sound of the menacing roars which plagued the skies above. The obsidian wings vigorously flapped as the threatening army of dragons soared up high. Okay troops you know the mission. Now go and slaughter everyone in sight the crime force dragon said as he made his appearance to the front line. His body now fully restored thanks to the effects of the holy grail. Charge. 
They Kriya's Gremory down Euclid yelled to his troops as they began to move out. I already told you, I won't let you hurt Rhea's dragon shot Issei yelled launching his powerful blast into the sky at the charging platoon. Issei's attack was completely intercepted by Euclid Lucifuge, who now stood in front of the Red Dragon Emperor with a boosted gear that looked much like his own. I'm sorry Sekirite, but I am your opponent. Euclid said as Issei gazed at his right arm. Euclid's boosted gear appeared on his right hand with a silver lining. Impossible, is that my boosted gear? Issei said as he carefully analyzed what appeared to be an exact recreation of his sacred gear. That's correct, I have perfectly made a replica of one of the Longinus weapons. And that's not all Hayato Issei. Dragon shot Euclid yelled as he fired an almost exact copy of Issei's powerful signature move. Like Issei, Euclid gathered all of his magic energy in the palm of his hand and launched a powerful and dangerous blast towards the Red Dragon Emperor. However, unlike Issei's move which was purely a powerful crimson red, Euclid's dragon shot blast was a mixture of silver and red. Issei took immediate action and placed his arms in a cross formation. Unfortunately, the blast made such an impact that even in his crimson cardinal promotion state, Issei was sent flying. And even my signature move. Just what have you done Euclid Lucifuge? Issei said as he prepared to battle. Whatever it takes to defeat you and take back my big sister Graphia. I've been so lonely without her by my side. Euclid said making Issei boost his power. Graphia isn't going anywhere Issei said making Euclid smirk. Oh and if you are fascinated by my perfect copy of your boosted gear so far, just wait until you see what I have in store for you next balance break, Euclid yelled as a huge surge of demonic power exerted throughout the atmosphere. Once again, Issei stared in shock and awe as Euclid once again did the impossible that not even Azazel with his sacred gear creation abilities could accomplish. He was now standing in front of Issei like a mirror as he stared at Issei through the exact same crimson mask of Issei's scale mail. Even my balance break. Issei replied after Euclid armored up. Magnificent isn't it? It's a shame, but if you want to save Rhea's Gremory, you'll have to defeat me first. Euclid said as he instantly and effortlessly smashed through a piece of Issei's armor. And I'm afraid it's not going to be easy. Euclid said as Issei dealt with the damage he had just been given. Damn you Euclid Issei said as he charged Euclid without a moment's notice. The two red dragon's fists collided in the sky, and judging by the intensity from both fighters, there was no obvious outcome who was going to win this fight. Meanwhile, the rest of the Gremory household found themselves battling against the remaining forces trying with all of their might to protect their president. Everyone please be careful. We are vastly outnumbered and the enemy is very strong. Fight for our world, but also be sure to come back alive, Rias commanded as the Gremories formed a defensive line. Yes president they all shouted as they began to dispatch the opposing forces. Ara, it's not a good idea to attack Issei Khan and our president. Go lightning dragons Akeno yelled, and within an instant, Akeno's holy lightning bolts suddenly took on a metamorphosis and transformed into three holy lightning, infused huge Asian dragons. The cries of pain and shocked enemy forces sounded out as more and more became victims of Akeno's ferocious lightning dragons. You think those dragons will hurt me? Grendel said as he began to charge towards Akeno. I'm your opponent crime force dragon. Kiba said as he blocked the intimidating dragon's path. Interesting. I haven't had the pleasure of tearing you limb from limb yet. Can you stand against my power? Grendel yelled as he suddenly fired a huge ball of flames towards the blonde knight. Kiba smiled as he drew his newly acquired blade and sliced through Grendel's attack cleanly. What impossible Grendel said as Kiba firmly gripped the heavy sword's handle. As I thought, this is the perfect opportunity to test my new blade. Kiba said as he held the high-level demon sword tight within his hand. You think your puny little sword is strong enough to cut through my hardened scales? Grendel said as he attempted to squash Kiba under his huge and ferocious claws. However, in an instant, Kiba used his extreme speed to dodge Grendel's sudden attack and cleaved through a portion of Grendel's tail. Actually yes I do. You see, there is nothing that the great demon sword Gram can't cut through. Kiba said as the dragon growled at the swordsman. You bastard I'll slaughter you, Grendel roared as the blood-shedding battle between night and evil dragon commenced. All of a sudden, Rhea's Gremory found herself immediately surrounded by various forces of the old Satan faction. Rhea's Issei yelled as he attempted to rush towards her. Not so fast Hayato Issei, I told you, you have to beat me first. Euclid said as he once again with ease pushed Issei back. Damn you Euclid. You may have copied my power, but your resolve is nowhere near as powerful as mine Issei said, causing all of his gems to light up. Boost 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 Issei with his enhanced power, smashed his fist straight into Euclid's replica helmet, revealing his silver hair once again. 
That's more like it's security, but it will take a lot more than that to defeat me. Euclid said as his own sacred gear began to increase his power. Euclid struck Issei's armored exterior straight in the stomach and shattered a portion of its shell. After coughing out a portion of blood, Issei quickly repaired his armor and charged for his deadly foe once again. Issei collided with the fake Sekirute once again, and as each punch was thrown out, to the red dragon's demise, Euclid was easily overpowering the believed to be unbeatable dragon. Come on red dragon emperor, surely you can see by now. You can't beat me. Euclid said after firing another dragon shot blast. Issei with a battle cry punched the dragon shot and managed to repel it back towards the arrogant demon. Euclid smirked and stopped Issei's punch with his extended palm. I told you, I'm stronger than you Hayato Issei Euclid said as he smashed Issei into the earth below. Crimson Dragon Cannon Issei yelled hitting Euclid with a direct hit. I must admit, I wasn't successful in perfecting that technique. Euclid said as Issei returned to the sky. That's because you can't fully copy the heart and soul I put in that attack. It's all for her. Issei said as he prepared another one. All for her? You mean Rhea's Gremory? Euclid said with a smug expression. Absolutely Issei yelled as he fired his blast again. It is certainly magnificent. However, it doesn't have enough power to beat me. Euclid said as he emerged from the smoke. Bastard. What are you planning to do to Rias? Issei said as he took off in a dash towards him. Euclid countered Issei's punches with his own and then dealt a colossal flying fist to Issei's helmet, shattering it into pieces. What are we planning? That's easy to answer. We are going to remove her from our threat list. Euclid said making the now unmasked Issei kick him in the head. I won't let that happen, Issei yelled as Euclid now stared at him with no signs of pain imprinted on his face. I'm afraid, it's already too late. Euclid said making Issei's eyes shoot wide open and search for Rias. Rias Issei yelled now seeing his beloved surrounded. This is checkmate security. Fire now upon Euclid's orders, a powerful and blinding emerald laser blasted through the crowds and made direct impact with Rias Gremory's chest. Upon impact, Rias' eyes became lifeless and the ruined princess suddenly hit the ground face first. Rias damn you Euclid you coward Issei shouted as he blasted Euclid with his bishop blaster and then dropped like a missile into the crowd of old Satan faction lackeys. There is the security kill him one yelled as they donned their sacred gears. This off you bastards I have no time for you Issei yelled at the top of his lungs as all who decided to get in his way were turned to ashes. As Issei quickly approached the collapsed Rias Gremory, Serzich's Lucifer and Asia were already there by her side. The Red Dragon Emperor dropped from the sky so hard, his landing was far from perfect, and as a result, he found himself sliding through the dirt as he rushed towards her. Hey Rias hang in there hey answer me Serzich's, what have they done to Rias? Issei said in a panicked state as he struggled to sense Rias Gremory's demonic energy. I think I can answer that the best. A voice said as they teleported to the battlefield. The Jukabees Labub. Please help Rias Issei said as the demon approached them. Calm down my boy. I'm going to assess her now. Ajuka said as he knelt down to assess Rhea's health. It's not looking good. Ajuka said with a gloomy expression. What do you mean? What's wrong with my little sister? Serzicha said trying his best not to lose his temper. She has had her evil pieces powers stolen, and not only that, her demonic power is fading fast. Ajuka said making Issei's fists bleed. There must be some way to save her what can I do? I'll give my own life if I have to Issei said, showing his clear dedication to the girl he loves. Is there a way to restore her king piece's power? If we can reverse that device then maybe Serzich is said being immediately interrupted by Ajuka. That's impossible I'm afraid. The only way to save Rhea's Gremory right now. Is for a king to make her part of their peerage with this special mutation queen piece I have created. Ajuka said as he revealed the evil piece from his pocket. I'll take her under my wing. A familiar voice said making all of them turn around. Razor. Issei said with both irritation and surprise in his tone. I will make Rias my new queen and save her from dying. Razor said with a smug look. No bucking way I already saved Rias from you once Razor and I'm not seeing that look on her face ever again, Issei yelled to the grinning Razor. But she's dying Hayato Issei. Aren't you being a little selfish right now? Razor said making Issei even more pissed. Don't buck with me you just want to make Rias your queen so you can do shameful things to her against her will Issei yelled now preparing to attack. Well isn't that to be expected? I mean, I need some sort of compensation for saving her. Isn't that right Lord Serzich's? Razor said making Serzich's suddenly go pale in the face. Well what will it be Securite? Rhea's freedom? Or her life? Razor said making Issei make an expression of an animal which was about to tear off the head of its prey. Chapter 45 Rhea's Gremory has fallen. Issei's tough decision. Well Securite, what is your decision? Razor said making Issei panic. 
I have to think please give me a moment to say said now forcing himself to think what would be best for Rias. We don't have time to waste right Lord Serzich's. And when you think about it, I was originally entrusted to care for her and keep her safe. Razor said making Serzich's also ponder on Rias' welfare. Just shut up a second I'm thinking any way I look at this, I still don't like the outcomes to this, and I'm pretty sure Rias would agree with me, Issei said, making Razor act cocky. Bet over yourself you damn brat this is for Rias and the future of our race. Quit daydreaming and face reality, Razor yelled making Issei mad. When I became Rias' servant, no even before that when Serzich's saved me and I first saw her smile, I made a vow to protect her happiness and keep her safe, and I know for a fact that you would not be able to fulfill her dreams and happiness, Razor you say save Rias as if she is a tool, a necessary item for the survival of our race. But I don't care about complicated and ridiculous things like that the bottom line is Rias is a normal girl. She has the right to be happy and the right to be loved not hexily harassed whilst she stays inside a cage, Issei yelled making Ajuka and Serzich's smile for a second. Then what do you suggest? Do you suggest that she die instead? Razor said now making Issei angrier. That's not what I'm saying at all Issei said now struggling to think straight. Ajuka, how long does Rias have before her demonic energy depletes to zero? Serzich's said making Issei gloomy. By the pace that her power is being drained and her total power meter, I'd say she has about 30 minutes to spare. Ajuka said making Serzich's finally lose it. Damn you Euclid Lucifuge I will see to it that you pay in blood for what you have done to Rhea Serzich's yelled as he met with Euclid in the sky. Zakirite, you have to decide what you are going to do. Ajuka said making Issei reach inside his pocket and look at the item that was previously inside it. Hayato Issei, sorry we are running a little late. Tsona Saji the student council Issei said to the unexpected party. What has happened to Rias? Sona asked as she approached Rias who was in Issei's arms. She's in a dire situation and I have to decide how to save her. Can you and your peerage assist my comrades in suppressing the enemy forces? Issei said making Sona look at Rias and then him again. Of course leave it to Asaji said now activating his sacred gear. The Citri household will take action. We will keep the enemy off you for as long as possible Hayato Issei. In return, please save her. Sona said as she and the others took flight to join the fight between the Gremories, the Phoenix household and the old Satan faction. Meanwhile, the crimson aura of the demon lord was bursting out at a dangerous level. Ah hello my brother-in-law. Have you come to fight me? Euclid said making Serzich's fire his magic at him. I've come to destroy you Serzich's said making Euclid smirk. This is actually a great opportunity. I've been dying to test out this power that I just stole from Rhea's Gremory. Euclid said as his hands now held magic with Rhea's Gremory's magic signature. You take my sister's power, and now you plan to use it against me. You're really trying to dig the knife in further aren't you? But you should know that I will not take it easy on you old Satan faction Serzich has said, now concentrating his magic power. That's fine by me, let's see how long you last against your little sister's incredible magic power Euclid said, firing a crimson and black shaded sphere at Serzich's. Serzich's blocked Euclid's attack with a defensive barrier and then countered Euclid's assault with his full power. I will never forgive you for what you have done to the underworld and to my sister Serzich's said now resuming his offense. Back on the battlefield, Kiba and the crime force dragon who had now somehow grown stronger were in what seemed to be a painful stalemate. With Asia back on the support team, the timid sister repeatedly healed Kiba's wounds with her long-range healing ability. Brendel was all battered up and bloody due to Kiba's vicious and accurate strikes. However, it had become perfectly clear to Kiba after facing against the ferocious and deadly dragon for so long. This dragon would not stop fighting until the beast was put down for good. Kiba was currently unarmed due to Grendel's previous attack. Burn to ashes you damn inferior being Grendel yelled as he fired an even bigger fireball towards Kiba at such a close range. Mirror Alice. Seconds before the embers scorched Kiba's wounded body, a huge mirror appeared. Blocking its path and returning the attack back towards the menacing dragon with double the strength. Kibuyudo are you okay? The vice president said as she deactivated her sacred gear. Vice president Tsubaki. Yes I'm fine. Thanks a lot you saved me there. Kiba said as he picked up Graham once again. It seems that you are up against quite the powerful opponent. It would be best if we fight him together. Tsubaki said as she stood by the knight side. Yes you're right. And besides, I feel at ease when I am assured that the queen of the Citri household has my back. Kiba said making Tsubaki blush. Let's go then Kiba Tsubaki said as she began to cast magic on the wounded but formidable creature. Yes I'm right behind you, Kiba said as he too charged Grendel with his sword firmly equipped. Elsewhere. Why do you keep on persisting on keeping me so far away from my older sister Serzich's? Euclid said as he cast another spell towards the demon lord. 
Brafia is my queen and I will do whatever it takes to protect her from you, she is my wife, and I will not be seen dead giving her to you, Serzich's replied resulting with Euclid grinning at him. That sounds good, then I guess I will just have to kill you oh great demon lord. And what better way to do just that than using the sister's power whom you appear to cherish so much. Euclid said now switching tactics and charged Serzich's head on. You're getting awfully arrogant aren't you Euclid Lucifuge. Then allow me to remind you who you are dealing with Serzich's said as he successfully sent the silver-haired antagonist to the ground. Interesting Serzich's. I guess this will be much more entertaining than I anticipated. Euclid said as he recovered and took flight once again. Surround him there is only one of them the old Satan faction soldiers said as they surrounded Saji. HMMPH I guess I need to show you the fruits of my training, then you scum. How dare you frighten my president's future students, I will imprison you with the dark flames of Ritra Blaze Black Fire, Saji roared as several dark flames scorched and surrounding all of those who dared to surround him. What's with these flames? I can't seem to escape from them no matter how hard I try one member said as he burned horribly in Vritra's flames. Magic doesn't work either these flames won't extinguish another member said as he felt his movements restricted further. As expected of my pawn. Good work Saji. Now don't let them escape we have to buy the security as much time as possible Sona said, making Saji smile and blush. Leave it to me president, I won't let a single one of them reach Hayato Saji said as he increased the intensity of his flames. Shadow prison Saji's aura increased and imprisoned even more threats to say. Will the president really be okay? Gasper said nervously to his partner Kaneko as they dispatched enemy after enemy. She'll be okay. After all, Issei Senpai is with her right now. Let's believe in him and keep these guys at bay to keep them from interrupting him. Kaneko said as she took out five soldiers with her Nekamata powers. Roger I may I'm a man too Gasper said now ensnaring a group of evil dragons within his time stopping ability. Nice Gasper Kun I'll finish them off Akeno said as she dispatched yet another group of enemies with her lightning dragons. Issei Kun Kiba and Akeno thought as they battled hard. Issei Senpai Gasper and Kaneko said in their minds as they successfully took on enemy after enemy. Issei San Asia said in her prayers as she healed her friends from afar. Please save President Ri as they all thought in unison as they once again put all of their faith in their most powerful and brave comrade. Issei's eyes suddenly shot open. His decision and his resolve clear without a cloud in his mind to question his plan. Okay I have decided. Issei said reverting Ajuka and Razor's attention towards him. So what is it going to be Sekirite? Ajuka said as he awaited Issei's decision. Will you give Ria's to me? Or will you let her die on the battlefield? Razor said with an arrogant look as if he was going to win this outcome. I choose none of the above Issei yelled making Ajuka and Razor surprised. Stop bucking around you immature low-class devil stop trying to let everything go the way you wish for it to in your little fantasy world. This is the only way for Ria's to be saved quit being so ignorant and make the right choice. Razor said as he grabbed Issei by the collar. However, it was at that moment when Issei easily removed Razor's hand that he remembered just how strong Issei was. That painful memory coming to the surface again. There is another way to save Ria's and I have it right here Issei said now clearly displaying his hidden item. That's a Razor said unable to utter the words. The king piece. Ajuka said now waiting for Issei's choice. That's right, Serzichas gave this to me the last time we met. And I have decided I will be the one to save Ria's and protect her personally Issei now bringing on Razor's rage. Don't speak nonsense you need more than resolve to become a high class devil, it's not that simple Razor said now looking into Issei's eyes which refused to waver. I have the power and knowledge inside of me to become a high class devil. So I am going to become the new king of the Kuo Gremories and bring back the woman I love I refuse to give her to you, Razor Issei said now making Razor step back a bit. It's true that with your capabilities and power that this could work Hayato Issei. However, there is only a 15% chance that your body is ready to accept this promotion if you will. If it fails, both you and Ria's will die together. There is not enough time to save her if you should fail. Ajuka said making Issei firmly hold the king piece. I won't hesitate or waver from the path I have chosen. I swore to her that I would make all of her dreams come true and that I would forever stay by her side bringing her true happiness. I won't die here. I gave her my word that I would never leave her alone. I will become the new king and take Ria's under my wing, I will accept this power and protect everyone, Issei yelled as he pressed onwards to this new path and his most difficult challenge he has ever faced. Very well, then I take it that is your decision Hayato Issei. Pawn of Ria's Gremory. Ajuka said making a final confirmation from the motivated teen. Absolutely I refuse to fail, Issei yelled as he now stood in front of Ajuka getting ready for what was coming next. Then we shall begin. Will you die or succeed? Only time will tell. 
prepare yourself security, because this isn't an official crowning ceremony, and because you are a pawn, this will hurt to the highest degree. Are you ready? Ajuka said making Issei give the king peace to Ajuka. Yes please proceed with the promotion. Issei said as he prepared himself for the trial. Riaz, I swear I will save you Issei thought to himself as the king piece began to flow towards him. Chapter 46 Issei's Heavy Gamble. Are you ready for this drag? Issei said to the dragon that dwelled within his gauntlet. Of course. Let's show the world once again partner show them you are the greatest red dragon emperor to have ever existed, by defeating the impossible once again drag said as the king piece began to enter Issei's chest. I got it. Issei said as he prepared for what would be the riskiest move of his life. All of a sudden, Issei dropped to his knees and clutched fiercely to his clothing. You can do it partner endure the pain and rise to the next level, Drag said as Issei experienced unbearable and almost death wishing pain. It hurts it hurts buck this hurts this by far is the most painful experience in both of my lives. But, compared to the pain I would have to endure with every second of every day. In a world without Rias, this pain is nothing to me I will survive this and save Rias this won't be enough to break my promise to her, Issei said as he tried his hardest to put up with the physical and mental suffering his body and mind was undergoing. You're wasting time you fool even if you were able to defeat me before, there is no way that a punk like you could become a high class devil just by pushing your body to its absolute limits, Razor said as Issei cried out in agony. Shut up I will save Rias just you watch you damn pervert this power will not beat me I will live, Issei said as his eyes suddenly became lifeless and his vulnerable skull hit the ground. It's just as I said you stupid brat. Rias fate now belongs to me. Razor said with an evil grin. Meanwhile, with the devil army finally on the battlefield along with the Phoenix and Citri household taking care of the rest of the enemy forces, the Grimmery household made their way over to the mastermind behind this diabolical scheme. It's useless Urzichas, you cannot defeat me. Euclid said as Serzichas prepared for another attack. Lord Serzichas what happened to Rias and Issei Kun? Akeno inquired as her and the rest of the peerage reached the demon lord. Rias' power along with her evil peace have been removed from her. Serzichas said making the Grimmeries look on in despair. No way Kiba said as he aggressively clutched his sword. I know it's terrible news. But as we speak, Issei is trying to absorb the power of the king piece I gave him in order to save Rias by bringing her back as a modified queen piece. Serzich is said now finally looking over at his disciple. Issei Senpai has fallen Kaneko said, leading the others to look also. Akendo decided to assume her duty as substitute leader and took action. Lord Serzich's, please go over to Issei and protect him from enemy forces. We will take care of Euclid Lucifuge and hold him off for as long as we can Akendo said, making Serzich's shocked. That's impossible you can't defeat him. Even if you all attacked as one, he would defeat you all. Serzich is said making Akendo instantly retort. We have to believe in Issei Kun like you said, Issei has found his resolve and is risking everything to save Rias and everyone else. After hearing you say that, we will put our complete trust in the fact that Issei will succeed and bring Rias back to us. So we will do what we can to hold off those who plan to get in his way, you need to protect Issei until he has finished this trial. As it stands, he is vulnerable and in danger. Akeno said making Serzich's finally smile. I understand. But don't aim to defeat him. Just hold him off until Issei is finished. Serzich is said as he created a magic teleportation circle. Leave it to us, Kiba said as he and the rest of the group prepared for battle. You put so much faith in the pawn of Rias. Why do you put so much faith in him? To the point where you would give up your lives to protect him. Euclid said making all of them smile. Because he is Issei they all said at the same time. Issei Khan is showing us all his dedication to us all by throwing himself into death itself. That's all the reason that I need to draw my blade against you. Kiba said as he took a stance. I have always believed in Issei Sen ever since the day we met. Whenever we found ourselves in trouble and at the end of the line, Issei always came through for us and protected us all. So I will not insult him by losing my faith in him, Asia said as she activated her sacred gear. Issei Kun saved me from my past and has proven to be a man I can easily lay my life down for. I will not let you get in Issei Kun's way Akeno said. We will not let you pass Euclid Lucifuge they all said as they built a defensive line between Issei and this imposter dragon emperor. Interesting, then I will just have to annihilate you, so Issei has nothing to save, Euclid said as he began to boost his power. Everyone be on your guard remember he has most of Issei's and Rhea's power keep your distance and only attack when it is necessary Akeno said, making them all unify. Yes Vice President they all shouted as they began their operation. Elsewhere, Hayato Issei found himself inside of his sacred gear once again. The overwhelming power of the King Evil Peace was coming down on the Red Dragon Emperor like a massive meteor and his body felt as if it had been pierced by a thousand knives from every direction. The white void had not a soul nor any kind of life form in sight. 
All Issei could see ahead of him was a huge red door. Issei proceeded forward trying to endure the impossibly mega mind strain and the piercing feeling each time he moved a single limb. He was determined to press onward despite this, whilst he endured the unbearable pain. Do you really think you can survive this? You're just a child who is being too selfish and who is in denial of what is in fact reality. A voice which was instantly identified as the devious and tormenting Rainer. You think you are on my level. You are nothing. You cannot channel this demonic power. It's the end of the line you damn brat. The next intruder turned out to be Razor who donned his wedding suit in which he wore at his wedding ceremony. The red dragon will die here today. And I will remain the strongest. Bali said as he activated his balance break. You're a nobody you damn low class devil you can't save anyone you'll end up alone once again and you will be helpless when you lose everything and everyone you care for. Ryu Tatsuo said as he equipped his emerald dragon armor and his shield and sword. You're not a real dragon. You're a weakling who I will tear to shreds, Grindel said as he prepared a fireball blast. Suddenly, ten green orbs appeared in the dimension and automatically took on a metamorphosis. And now, Issei had ten juggernaut drive dragons standing tall in front of him. You'll be crushed by the dragons of domination. You will die today. There is no escape. All of Issei's opponents who chose to stand in his way attacked Issei all at once. Unleashing their most powerful attacks towards him. Issei cried out in pain as he took each and every attack directly. The Red Dragon Emperor suffered from severe and critical burns from Razor Phoenix and Crime Force Dragon Grendel. He was impaled by Ryu Tatsuo's Dragon Slayer and Raynor's Holy Spear. And to top it all off, he suffered life-threatening injuries from his power-raging ancestor's Longina Smasher. Issei began to collapse but slammed his foot into the ground preventing himself from falling. I won't fall it's true that this pain is impossible to simply ignore. I'm not going to lie, it feels like most of my vital organs have been destroyed and I definitely feel like I'm dying. I know this may be an illusion, but I am truly suffering right now, but so what? Issei yelled as he stood tall and removed both Ryu's blade and Raynor's spear. You think that your attacks or words will stop me from achieving what I have to accomplish? You could attack me until my body is nothing but a pile of blood, but there is no damn way in hell that I am going to stay down, I'll keep standing and take your attacks head on do you honestly think that this pain will stop me from saving her? I will endure all of this pain and strain that you are torturing me with. Your words and your strength. Neither of them have enough power to stop me from becoming a high class devil and saving Rias be gone from here, I have no intention whatsoever of making the woman I love wait for me any longer didn't you hear me? I said be gone Issei yelled as he successfully disposed of the mirages that plagued his mind and body with his immense and all-powerful dragon aura. Issei suddenly felt the pain he was so awfully experiencing had finally left his body and with Rhea's door right in front of him, the young dragon wielder raced towards that now functioning door. Issei smiled when he saw that beautiful shade of red and that rich fragrance which enriched the room. Issei. Rhea said as Issei approached and held her close to him. Sorry for making you wait Rhea's. Issei said as he kissed her on the lips. Issei, are we dead? Rias asked in a worrisome tone. Of course not. Far from it Rias. I'm here to bring you back. Issei said as he looked her in the eyes. But can we win this battle? I can see our friend struggling to face him. And he easily smashed through your armor. Don't worry Rias, I'm going to keep my promise that I made to you. I will never let you be sad and I will stay by your side forever. Issei said making Rias tear up. Thank you Issei. Honestly I was scared that you weren't coming. Rias replied making Issei grin. Of course I would come for you Rias. I said it before didn't I? Time and time again, I will always come to save you. Issei said making Rias smile. Let's go back Issei. Rias said as she stood directly in front of him. Yes, Rias. Issei said now pulling her in close to him with a hug. Issei's chest began to glow a crimson red and his body began to feel warm and soothing as a blinding light consumed the pair. Okay now the damn security failed, it's up to me to save Rias. I will certainly treat you like my queen Rias. Razor said as he reached for the queen clutch tightly in Issei's fist. All of a sudden, Razor stepped back abruptly when the believed to be dead Issei stood up tall. Mode change complete. Commencing awakening Drake yelled now causing the boosted gear to shine brightly. Ah Issei yelled as his crimson aura began to expand and overflow from his body. Impossible did that brat manage it. Razor said as Issei's power continued to increase way beyond what everyone believed to be impossible heights. Issei became consumed by an incredibly colossal tower of flames which covered throughout the vast area. This resulted in numerous people having to evacuate to avoid suffering damage and possibly death from this exerted demonic and dragon energy. Awakening successful Cardinal Crimson promotion Cardinal Crimson King mode Drag yelled as the now hidden red dragon emperor started to become visible. 
All eyes were on the security as he now emerged from the flames. Piba, Zenovia, Kaneko, Gaspar, Asia and Akeno suddenly felt a change occur inside of them. Images of the security rushed into their minds now marking their brand new master and King Hayato Issei. Issei's metamorphosis now became visible. Hayato Issei's dragon height had now become taller, and his upper torso of his armor had now increased in mass. Issei's two powerful dragon wings had now been transformed into more powerful and gigantic proud dragon wings, which now were supported by his new physique. Did Issei Senpai fail? Gasper questioned as he feared the worst. No Gasper it's the opposite. I can feel it inside of me. Issei-kun has without a doubt become our new king. Kiba said as he and the others stared at their new master. But I can't sense his power and it was so obvious earlier. Kaneko said as Issei remained where he stood. It's not possible to sense his power right now Kaneko-chan. We won't be able to feel his power until he chooses to show it. He's on a completely different level now. Akeno said as she stared at her friend still unconscious. So what if you became the Gremory's new king? I'll just use my device on you next. Fire Euclid said as he prepared to steal Issei's power next. With the blink of an eye, Issei disappeared from everyone's sight and within an instant reappeared again with a machine that was so skillfully hidden and extremely reinforced was so demolished. This being the only evidence that Issei had moved at all. Impossible just when did you? Euclid said as Issei approached the gobsmacked razor and his out of action fiancé. Do you think I'll let you revive her? Dragon shot Euclid said as he blasted the security with his own technique. The cloud of smoke erupted as the attack made a direct hit on the still target. Euclid laughed maniacally after his attack successfully hit the Red Dragon Emperor. Only to stop when he saw Issei with his back to him and not a scratch on his perfectly new and improved crimson armor. I say Hayato, command by my name. To the Rias Gremory. To allow thy soul to descend to this earth once more. To become my queen who transcends all in her beauty. Come back to this world again and stay forever by my side. I grant you with a new life. Now be reborn my queen Rias Gremory Issei stated completing the servant ritual. Issei held Rias in his arms and kissed her in the forehead before gently placing her back down again. Did it work Ajuka? Issei asked getting a smile in response. Yes very nicely down security. Her body is recovering its strength and her power has been restored. Her life is no longer in danger. Ajuka said making Issei smile and place back on his helmet. Don't get cocky Hayato Issei you still cannot beat me, Euclid said as he boosted his power continuously. Let's finish this once and for all Euclid. I'm going to smash that phony armor of yours to pieces and force you to surrender Issei said now displaying his newly formed demonic aura. There is only room for one security drag said as the two adversaries prepared for battle. Chapter 47 Hail to the New King A Crash of Crimson. The crimson heavenly dragon I possess within me, rise up to become a king, Issei and Drag said in unison, as the new unlocked power began to resonate throughout the atmosphere. Amazing Issei Kun really did become stronger his power is incredible, Kiba said as he used his sword to prevent him from falling. Issei's peerage gathered near him as they stared at their master in awe, with their eyes filled with hope and determination to serve him. Everyone, thank you for your help in saving Rias. But if it's okay with you, I think it's time for your king to deal some payback for all of your pain. Issei said as he increased his power further with the boosted gear. Issei senpai, we can still fight and besides, there are still loads of enemies that could get in your way. Kaneko said making Issei smile inside his helmet. I see, well then, I will just have to give you some encouragement, Dragon King's blessing, Issei uttered immediately surrounding the area behind him with an emerald dome. Within seconds, the Gremories were covered in a powerful but gentle aura. As they found themselves being gifted with invigorating and new levels of power. Kaneko's power increase was the most obvious as she now stood before her comrades with a completely different appearance. The young Nekamata found herself now completely startled as she found her body had taken a definite change. The Rook of the Grimmeries realized that she had grown older and her height and bust size had dramatically increased. But along with this mind-boggling change came a wicked power boost to make things that much more convenient for the surprised fighter. Amazing, I can feel the power flowing through my veins. Along with Issei's warmth. Kaneko said as she embraced the boosted strength and magical ability inside her. What are your orders my king? Akeno said with a mischievous and daring expression. Showing clearly that she enjoyed referring to Issei in such a manner. Everyone take care of the remaining forces of Euclid's army. I will deal with Euclid myself, Issei commanded sending his comrades into battle. Zenovia, Grendel is still giving the student council a hard time. Let's show the crime force dragon why it is that his kind used to fear the knights. Kiba said picking Gram up once again and activating his balance break. So now all of his dragon knights were also carrying powerful blades. Yes I'm with you, Zenovia said as she and the rest of the Grimmery split into groups. 
leaving Issei and Euclid with a whole terrain to battle in. Was that really a good idea Sekirite? Giving your friends all of your power I mean. Euclid said now speaking in an arrogant tone to suggest he had already foreseen his victory. All of my power? No, that's not true. Issei said instantly vanishing from Euclid's sight. The silver-haired dragon imposter suddenly found himself experiencing agonizing pain as his armor was instantly pulverized by an immediate reappearing Issei. That was only a small fraction of my new power. Issei said finishing his sentence as he easily shattered Euclid's armor into pieces. Am you Sekirite Euclid said as he felt naked without his armor to protect him. Hurry up and re-equip your armor. I'm nowhere near close enough to finishing crushing you just yet Issei said as Euclid quickly reassembled his fake imitation armor. Don't think for a second that just because you have become a high class devil that you will finish this so quickly don't underestimate me, you power hungry fool Euclid said now firing a dragon shot at Issei. Once again, Issei was gone out of sight, frightening the now weaker Euclid. Haha I think you're forgetting something Issei Hayato, remember this. I have all of your abilities Euclid laughed maniacally as he placed his fake boosted gear arm towards his eyes and used Issei's boosted gear technique. To Euclid's joy, Issei suddenly came into sight and a dragon shot was now heading his way. However, the moment Euclid caught sight of the dragon king, Issei vanished once again. Impossible I had you in my sights locked, Euclid said as Issei once again appeared in front of him. You think you can beat me with your stolen sacred gear abilities? Well I've got news for you buddy, my buddy Drag here is boosting my power way faster and even higher than your weak replica Issei said, uppercutting Euclid into the sky. The boosted gear responds to the heart and will of the user, and there is no way you can match the power I harbor inside this special sacred gear. My resolve is and always will be, stronger than your pathetic copy, Issei said as he instantly appeared above Euclid Lucifuge and smashed him back down into the ground again. Issei's opponent hit the ground hard and once again, his replica scale mail was easily annihilated. After a struggle to stand up on his feet again, Euclid restored his armor but found he couldn't restore a piece around his left leg. Looks like your sacred gear invention is reaching its end. Issei said making Euclid frustrated. Damn you how dare you how dare you do this to me, you damn monster Issei's foe said as he after a struggle, restored the final piece of armor. Give up Euclid Lucifuge, no matter how many forces you bring. Or how much power you steal from me. You cannot defeat me. Issei proudly stated as a strange aura began to surround the enraged silver-haired demon. Well then, let's see how well you do against the power of the one you cherish so dearly, Euclid yelled as he unleashed Rhea's Gremory's stolen destructive power which hit Issei with a direct hit. Ah ha 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 not so fast now are you? The arrogant demon said as the smoke began to blow away from the dragon behind it. Lucifuge's expression of joy and victory instantly vanished the moment Issei became visible again. The earth began to shake tremendously as Issei's crimson aura grew to exponential levels and began to stain the battlefield, including the skies in his crimson glow. And to Euclid's greatest despair, Issei still remained standing without a scratch on him. How dare you how dare you use Rhea's power against me you bastard Issei yelled recalling when Ryu did the exact same thing to him. Rafia's little brother's actions and the drastic consequences he was about to face became a reality, the instant Issei smashed his highly boosted fist into his face. Unforgivable. Unforgivable Issei roared as he prepared his own dragon shot. You like that then how about this? Extinguished Star Euclid created Rhea's most powerful but slow technique. However this technique worked as a black hole and destroyed all within its path. Boost 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 boost. Super Dragon Shot Issei yelled as he unleashed a mega blast towards the victim. Don't underestimate me Euclid yelled back as he once again tried to strengthen his own power. An atomic explosion erupted on the battlefield as both attacks smashed into each other. Which meant a lucky break for Issei's friends who felt it was best to get as far away from Issei's battle as possible. Despite Rhea's believed to be indestructible attack, Issei still remained standing. Whilst the unlucky and outclassed old Satan faction member lay on the ground with his armor once again eviscerated. His limbs coated within his own blood. Dead up you bastard I'm not finished dealing you the king's punishment for hurting my friends, not to mention my queen, Issei yelled as Euclid struggled to his feet once again. Issei closed in on Euclid in a blink of an eye. The enraged Red Dragon Emperor dealt excruciating and critical damage to the now punching bag Euclid Lucifuge with a 50 punch combo. Issei followed his punching barrage with a painful high kick to the traitor's jaw, sending him sky high. 
The security met with a wounded demon in the sky and sent him flying in the opposite direction when he drove a foot into his gut. Issei next using his dragon wings after he flapped them vigorously, sent shockwaves cutting into the target skin. Just as Euclid was about to vanish from the atmosphere, Issei wrapped his tail around his neck and pulled him back. That over here Issei pulled Euclid in close and fired another super dragon shot, but this time in such close range that he wouldn't be able to escape its dynamic power. A -h 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 the tortured demon cried out as he hit the ground after suffering severe damage. Issei landed on the ground and took this opportunity to sense out for his comrades to check on their well-being. Once he was satisfied that his gifted power to them was keeping them safe, the brown-haired teen reverted his attention to Euclid, who was now pulling a bottle from his pocket. Issei instantly recognized the bottle to be a vial of Phoenix Tears. However, Issei didn't stop his opponent from recovering. He waited patiently for Euclid to regenerate. With his wounds healed and his strength restored, Euclid vaulted up instantly. However, he was clearly pissed and exhausted. The silver-haired villain struggled to catch his breath as he narrowly escaped death. You think you're so fast? Well I've got news for you damn dragon. I'm fast too, Euclid said as he reappeared holding a blade towards the beautiful skin of the still unconscious Rhea's Gremory. The Sayer remained where he stood. His anger ferociously building inside of him as he removed his helmet. If I'm going to die here, I'm at least going to accomplish my goal, now stay right there Hayato Issei while I kill you, Euclid said stopping his sentence short once Issei removed his helmet blaring at him with a look alone that spelled his death. I'm only going to say this one so pay attention. Put down the sword take it away from my fiancé's next before I bucking rip off your arm and the rest of your limbs Issei shouted striking fear into the believed to be fear-free demon. Stay back Euclid yelled as he one second later felt his body had suddenly became lighter. Unfortunately for him, a feeling of faintness began to come over him as well. Euclid looked over to his right where his hand was holding a sword to Rhea's Gremory's neck. However, not only was Rhea's Gremory now in Issei's free arm, but so was Euclid's right arm, which its blood was now staining the ground as his dripped above it in Issei's other arm. Damn you you filthy creature I'll annihilate you you monster Euclid yelled as he struggled to stop the blood pouring out of his empty arm socket. You won't die from that wound alone. And besides, the only thing we need to bring back with us is your head, so you can spill all of your intentions to us. A leg or arm will not be missed. Issei said with a frightening glare, making Euclid feel as if he was looking at death itself. Wait for me my love, I will finish this now. Issei said as he quickly transported Rias to a safe location and then returned back to the field of battle. I will destroy you I will end your existence with every ounce of magic power I possess, Euclid yelled as he began to concentrate both his copied dragon shot ability and the destruction powers he stole from Rias. Everyone brace for impact Issei yelled as he began to make preparations to end this fight once and for all. Issei called on the power of his bishop blaster cannons, which were now greater in mass and power storage. I will hit you with everything I have and you will be killed by me, I will take back my sister and wipe out the Grimory clan, the white demon said as his attack grew larger in power. Issei made his counter-strike preparations and began charging both his crimson dragon cannon strike and his bishop blasters. I Euclid fired his ultra dragon shot towards Issei, who was finalizing his attack. Sorry Euclid, but this is where it all ends. Crimson Dragon King's Blaster Issei roared as both his Crimson Dragon Cannon and Bishop Blaster combined after they both fired and molded together to create a colossal blast, which practically consumed and swallowed up the power of Euclid's weak attack in comparison. Euclid cried out in pain as the attack swallowed him whole and blinded the area. Once the light show in the sky disappeared and the sky returned to its original purple shade, Euclid was now laying on the ground, with what was left of his previous consciousness now faded and gone. Serzich's. Issei said alerting the nearby demon lord. Yes Issei kun. Serzich's replied feeling it was safe now Issei's aura had simmered down. Please take Euclid into custody. Issei said as Serzich's approached him. Of course. But what are you going to do? Serzich's asked Issei who now put his helmet back on. I have cleaning up to do. The red dragon emperor replied as he took flight towards the other remaining old satan faction forces. It's Issei senpai Gasper said as the Gremory's king appeared. That means he must have defeated the leader Asia said, making the others rejoice. Well what would you expect from our new king? Akeno said with once again a smile on her face. Everyone clear the area I'm going to wipe them all out with one attack. Issei said as he raised his palm up to the sky. Yes my king they all yelled as they obeyed Issei's command. Hey isn't that the security up there? One of the rebels said pointing up to the sky. Impossible Lord Euclid was fighting him. No way. He defeated Lord Euclid. Wait a second he's up to something everybody run. The opposing team began to fall back as soon as they saw the giant sphere of destruction raised high above Issei's head in the palm of his hand. 
Dragon King's Oblivion Issei yelled as he launched his supernova bomb magical dragon attack on the remaining forces. Issei's other newly formed move like Rhea's possessed the same destructive power. However, it was much faster and instantly imploded the minute it hit the ground. The blast site was so vast, all of the retreating treasonous demons were incinerated within an instant. Issei touched the ground once again and deactivated his armor. Falling into the arms of his friends where they were there ready to catch him. Great job Issei-kun. Thanks to you, not only did we not lose any of our precious friends. But we can live to see the next day. Akeno said as she and everyone else held him in their arms. Still, it's hard to believe that Issei-kun single-handedly ended this conflict. Serzicha said coming to greet them with phoenix tears. It's not hard to believe at all or Serzicha's. Kiba said making Serzicha's nod. The Grimmeries carried both Rias and the unconscious savior of the underworld back to the castle. Where they would rest and afterwards resume their party for yet another reason. Chapter 48 The Master and His Servant. Rias POV. My name is Rias Grimmery. I am a former third-year student at Kuo Academy as I have now graduated and moved on towards college. Where I will continue to gain more knowledge and continue to keep my secret life in a shroud of shadows. You see, I lead a double life unknown to the majority of my fellow classmates and peers. That's right, I am the daughter of the famous noble family of devils the Gremories. I am a high-class devil and the king. Oops I mean former king. Let me start again. I am now queen of Issei Hydu's peerage. After what may have been the underworld's most catastrophic and deadly civil war, I lost my authority and power of a king. To be more precise, my powers were taken from me by the enemy, along with what nearly cost me my life. My body began to turn cold, and my vision suddenly began to fade. I was going to die there all alone, and I was about to break my promise to the one I cared for the most. I gave him my word that I would never let him be alone ever again, and here I was about to die in solitude and leave my essay to battle these monsters on his own. The tears welled up inside me with no exit to flood out, as my body lay still and lifeless. The thought of dying there was just pure torture, but I refused to give up hope. And then, when my heart was just about to beat its last ever rhythm, I felt my body ascend to a bright crimson light. My hearing suddenly returned to me and I could hear the man I love. His voice, his gentle warm words as he summoned my soul and body back to the world of the living. My body began to instantly heat up as if more coal had been thrown onto the fire inside of me. My eyes still barely able to see, saw his face the moment my vision began to adjust. The moment I saw his signature smile, my heart began to beat once again. And as I looked deeply into his hazel eyes, a mighty dragon roared within my heart and soul. Screaming out, this man is my master. He is my king and I am his loyal and loving queen. And I felt my life restored, but my consciousness still faded, my essay turned this battle completely around. Restoring both morale and strength to the defenders of hell as he effortlessly defeated and captured Euclid Lucifuge my supposed brother-in-law. My sister-in-law Graphia is being kept inside the castle because of Euclid's ties with the old Satan faction coming to light. To avoid her being in any danger, she will stay there until it all dies down. It has been a week since that battle for our lives. And to my disappointment and worries, Issei is still sleeping off the effects of his sudden promotion to king and high demon class. Thanks to both Ajuka's mutated queen piece and Issei's overwhelming power, I still possess all of my magical power and also possess the ability to improve my powers and raise them to even greater heights. Despite how much I wanted to stay by his side, I have been forced by both my father and my brother to attend college. Due to their reasons that if I were to not attend on the first day, my reputation as an exceptional student would be ruined. However, my heart and mind are both at ease knowing full well that Issei is being taken care of by everyone else in my absence due to the school holidays taking place at Kuo Academy. However, this also makes me envious of the other girls who get to remain by Issei's side while I am so far apart from him. That reminds me, we still haven't decided on my replacement as president of the Occult Research Club. Oh well, we have plenty of time to decide that. My new college campus is a great distance from Kuo Academy and my home. This means that sneaking out during breaks would become rather difficult to achieve. I check my phone once again as I head off towards my next lecture, and there is still no word from the others on Issei's condition. I wander through the corridors alone because of Akeno's timetable being slightly different to my own. Right now as I approach my last class, Akeno is inside her clubroom with her fellow classmates, who decided to join Akeno's Japanese tea ceremony club, which became quite popular in no time at all. Akeno has been at this college a week longer than I have, so I'm still not familiar with most of the students who go here. Well on the exception of my former third-year classmates who have evidently spread my entrance to the site. Once again I walk through the halls of an establishment with many onlookers staring at me with perverted gazes. It makes me feel uncomfortable when I remember that Issei will no longer be able to remain by my side whilst I study here. 
It's almost like before I met Issei and I put up with this on a daily basis. At least when I was with Issei, many men would avert their eyes from me when they felt the intimidating aura that my Issei gave off as he stayed on alert right beside me. Many gentlemen callers pestered me as I finally exited my last lecture and I made it my mission to escape them so I could teleport away from it all. But as I turned down offer after offer, one man in particular was really persistent and seemed to not possess the ability of hearing my words. He gave me the creeps and gave off the same sort of vibe I felt off of Razor. This man's name was Sebastian Goodridge, and despite my constant rejections of his invitations, he still followed me as I exited the campus's grounds. Come on Riaz, I insist you accompany me for dinner. My father's restaurant's cuisine is to die for, and I'm certain you will enjoy its elegance. Sebastian said as I clearly showed no interest. I'm very sorry, but I have to be heading home. I said trying to escape. Sebastian suddenly grabbed my hand making me slightly irritated. I insist you accompany me Ria's Gremory, any girl would kill to dine with me. Sebastian said as his grip suddenly tightened. Like I said I'm I said suddenly finding my voice interrupted by what sounded like the squeals of girls. Hi who is that hunk on the motorbike? One of the females said as a vehicle took a sudden skid outside of the college gates. Don't tell me that's. Another girl said making me look towards where the commotion was coming from. A mysterious motorcyclist suddenly removed his helmet, and the moment his helmet was gone, my heart began to beat at a rapid rate. No way. It's Kuo's prince Issei Haidu one of the girls said showing her friends a picture of Issei at the sports festival. I've heard of him wow what's he doing here? Another girl said as Issei walked towards me and pulled me into his arms. How was your first day Arias? Issei said to me as he embraced me warmly. Issei was wearing a crimson and black leather bike jacket with red trousers. On the handlebars of his bike hung his dragon helmet which he recently removed to show me his handsome face and heartwarming smile. Issei's transport was one of the presents he was gifted by my brother at Issei's one-year anniversary party. Currently, Issei's bike was an obsidian black with a giant red European dragon on both sides of it. But this bike also held a special power within its unusual manufacturing. Issei could by linking his boosted gear with it, can change it into any form or color he so desired. Issei was all I could say at this point. So many words of gratitude were trying their hardest to come out of me, but I could only say his name with love as I welcomed his warmth. I missed you Rias. Issei said to me making my cheeks redden and my tears stream. Hey who do you think you are peasant? Sebastian said to my fiancé making me want to kick him right in the baby maker for disgracing my love so terribly. Who am I? Issei said making me suddenly await his words. Would he really declare it right here in front of everyone? I'm Rias Gremory's fiancé. Issei said making all of the girls scream in excitement and a certain gentleman caller irritated. That reminds me Issei, why are you here? I ask suddenly the thought occurring to me. Why am I here you ask? I'm here to take you home of course Rias. Issei said making me smile. Hey wait a second nobody takes girls away from me when I invite them to dinner, Sebastian said, inviting a little of Issei's possessive personality. Well I hate to break it to you Sebastian was it? But you're not taking my woman anywhere today or any day. Now kindly let go of Rhea's shoulder before I show you what happens to those who dare to lay a hand on my girl so nonchalant. Issei said making Sebastian angry but back off. Issei lifted me into a bridal style and placed me on the back of his motorcycle. Let's go home my queen. Your chariot awaits. Issei said to me as he placed his spare helmet on my head. I nodded and wrapped my arms around his bulky and muscular body as he placed on his crimson dragon helmet and revved the engine. The bike roared to life and shot down the street in a matter of seconds leaving my persistent pest in its dust with his anger boiling and his mouth agape. As the bike took off down the road, I felt the wind blowing through my hair and the feeling I so longed for since I reawakened. Freedom I felt free free as a bird that had just been released from its cage. Issei's bike now clearly out of sight from bystanders or witnesses, suddenly took off down the tarmac with mind-boggling speed, which would be invisible to the common naked eye. And to my greatest joy, we were now home. Issei and I returned to our room which out of the kindness and consideration of our time apart from one another, everyone decided to give us some time alone to catch up. As I stared at Issei's naked form whilst he changed in front of my eyes, I felt as if this was a private show dedicated just for me. And to make matters awkward, my heart and body longed for his touch on my naked skin. Normal POV. Issei and Ria sat down side by side to each other on the bed. Ria's head was leaning against Issei's shoulder, and Issei continuously stroked her hair. The lovers didn't say a word as they quietly enjoyed each other's company. Rhea snuggled up to Issei as much as she possibly could to embrace all of the warmth that she missed out on for so many days that she felt she would die without it by her side. The ruined princess's heartbeat thumped loudly inside her chest as her body continuously became hotter and hotter. 
the crimson-haired teen could not stand her deprivation any longer. With a mischievous grin, Rhea's hand began to trail down Issei's abdomen. Rhea's, what are you doing? Issei said as Rhea's began to unfasten his belt enabling herself access. You've worked so hard for me Issei and you've gotten so tense as a result. Especially here. Rhea said as she pulled down his trousers and boxers. Leaving his secret compartment on full display. Let me massage it for you. Rhea said as she began to move her hand up and down, his built-up hexwell urges. Rhea Rhea's Issei weakly replied as he fell helpless to her touch. Lemon skipped. Issei and Rhea's embraced each other under the covers. The loving couple didn't do much after their enjoyable and intense workout. Nope they just felt each other's warmth as their naked skin brushed up against them both. They both just enjoyed the peace and quiet as times of peace, whether it be short or long, returned to them once again. And as they both drifted off to sleep in a hugging state, they both said this to each other. For you are my queen. And you are my king. I will always remain by your side and love you for all of eternity. Why you say? Why Rias? For you are now my master. And you are now my servant. I will love and cherish you. I will always protect you. And I promise that I will never let you be alone again. That I will make all of your dreams come true. For you will soon be my bride. And you will be my groom. And we will live for each other and never die alone. For you are now my queen. And you are forever and will always be my king. I love you Rias. And I love you Issei. The end. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.